church, how you doing today? Yeah, enjoying the good weather this morning. It's nice out. Hopefully, you had some little bit of rain this morning. Let's stand together. We're going to open up in a word of prayer and, and get into uh, time of worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we get to come and join together in giving you thanks and praise because you are worthy of our praise. Lord God, you don't require us to sing perfectly or play an instrument. You just want our hearts to be turned to you on Sunday to give you glory because you are worthy simply because of that. Thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity together to gather, to sing together, to give you, uh, to give you praise offerings, Lord God, this morning. We pray for, the, for our fellow brothers and sisters around the world who cannot meet together, who can't praise out loud for fear of their lives, Lord God. We pray that you, even though they're, they're limited, that they are still worshiping you in their hearts and keep them safe wherever you are, Lord God. So, Lord God, let us enjoy together our time together as we sing to you this morning. In your name I pray, amen. Let's sing together this morning. You probably should know this one. Have you been to Jesus with cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All right, hold on a second. Hang on a second. This is a happy song. <laughs> All right. It's a little bit of a country song. So this is what I want you guys to do, if that's okay. Can you come along? Is that all right? It's okay if you don't have any rhythm, so that's all right. It's just like this. Ready? 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 Watch my foot, actually. I can't do both two, two things at once. I'm sorry. I wish I had another arm. Ready? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, and. There we go. Have you been to Jesus for this cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? Is how are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Here we go. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Holy, 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 
We have a place because we are children of God and you have set us free. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. And the reason that we're here rejoicing this morning is because of that freedom. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us this morning. Thank you for being here and helping us gather today together to just give you our hearts and our souls as one. Now, Lord God. We want to worship you as well with our tithes and our offerings because you have given us so many blessings during the week, not because you have to, simply because you love us and you want to. Lord God, and for the many blessings we have received in our life, we, as a token of offering and a sign of surrender, we want to give you something back to you as a symbol to say, we trust you for our daily bread. We trust you for tomorrow. We trust you for the future. So take these gifts, Lord God, use them so that the kingdom of heaven will be increased, so that people around the world will hear your word and be saved and turn to you. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Devon Alliance Church. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning, either in person or online. So I have a question for you. How many of you enjoy going to a barbecue? Well, I sure hope that there's more than just a few of you because Devon Alliance Church is celebrating the fathers in our lives with a barbecue. It will be so much fun and it'll be super tasty. All that you have to bring is you, yourself, your family, and a salad, perhaps your favorite salad. There will be hamburgers, hot dogs, dessert, and your salad, of course. So we can't wait for you to join us on June 19th after the Sunday morning service to celebrate all the wonderful dads in our lives. Now kids, I have some super, super exciting news for you. Are you ready for it? What have you been waiting for? for the last couple years that takes place here at Devon Alliance Church every summer? I wanna hear your answers. Okay, if you said VBS, you are right. Devon Alliance Church is having a vacation Bible school this summer and we want you to come join in the fun. This will be on July 18th all the way to the 22nd. We are gonna have a week full of singing and Bible stories and crafts and experiments and tasty snacks. How much more can you ask for? It is going to knock your socks off this summer. So get your mom or your dad or your auntie or your uncle or your brother or your sister or your grandma or your cousin or someone to register you online so you can join us this summer. Registration can take place online through our Church Center app or through the event section on our website, or if you're still struggling, you can see this guy right here and ask him to help you out. So we hope that you can make it. Now, 
That's all the exciting news I have for today. So I hope that you have a wonderful day and enjoy the service. I'm wondering how much coffee she had before she did those announcements. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. <clears throat> Kids, time for you to head out for Kids Church. If you have a Bible with me, with you, I invite you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It's Communion Sunday. Good to have you here. We're going to focus our attention on the table this morning as we look at God's Word together. So now that you're there, I'm going to ask you to bow with me as we pray. Father God, as we come to this place, we're very aware that you've invited us to join you at your table. Help us to hear your invitation clearly this morning. Help us to hear your heart. Help us to hear what it is you want us to do as we gather. Speak to us in a way that we can understand. Help us not miss this moment, this invitation to join you, the Almighty God the one who loved us so much that he sent his only son to pay the penalty our sin deserved. Help us to do this in remembrance of him. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've been preparing for this morning. One phrase has been stuck in my mind, and you're going to hear it over and over again. But I'm going to read this passage first beginning at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In remembrance of me. We've heard those words so frequently. We might be tempted to overlook them. But that would be a mistake because there's so much in that simple phrase. In remembrance of me. I don't know if you've noticed it before, but Scripture offers very uh, limited instruction when it comes to communion. There's this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 where we're told we are to participate in a worthy manner. That's what verse 27 says if we continued reading there. A worthy manner. If you continue to verses 28 and 29, you read these words, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and, or drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats or drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Every time I read those words, I'm reminded that the Lord's Supper is serious business. It's not something we we'll participate in without giving it thought. Because to do so would be mocking the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. By either participating without a full understanding of, of what he accomplished on the cross, or by participating with, while harboring unconfessed sin in our hearts. Either way, we, we'd be mocking the sacrifice if we did not examine ourselves and we did not take the time to think through what we're doing. If you think about it, Scripture also offers very little instruction regarding the second ordinance we practice in the church, and that's baptism. Both sacraments are a reminder of our union with Christ. Both declare his death and his resurrection. Both speak powerfully of being cleansed from sin. Both reinforce the idea of new birth, of spiritual regeneration, 
In the New Testament, baptism is portrayed as an initiatory step in the discipleship journey. It's not required for conversion, but it's a mark of discipleship. Matthew 28, Jesus told his disciples to do what? Go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that he had commanded. Those words prompted an author by the name of Michael Root to say, at its very least, baptism is an act of obedience. Jesus said, go baptize. It's obedience. Communion also is an act of obedience. Because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. It wasn't think about doing this. Do this in remembrance of me. But have you ever stopped to consider the way we approach these two ordinances, these two key components in the life of the church? Both are a matter of obedience. Both are a a symbol that reminds us of of the nature of our relationship with God. But in the early church, one is portrayed as something we do immediately after conversion. The other is something we only engage in after careful, reflective evaluation. Of baptism, Jesus says, believe and be baptized. Of communion, he says, a man ought to examine himself carefully. I can't help but wonder if sometimes we get that backwards in the life of the church. When it comes to baptism, we tend to have classes, we do interviews, we, we debate when and where and how. We want to make sure we, we examine this carefully. But then comes Communion Sunday and we just start passing the trays. This morning, before we pass the trays, we're going to take some time to consider the significance of the Lord's Supper. You know, I think one of the reasons there's not a lot of detail regarding baptism and communion in Scripture is that God knows that as human beings we have a tendency to get so wrapped up in how we do things that we overlook why we do things. We get zeroed in on the method and we neglect the message. You know what? I've seen that happen in my life a number of times over the years. It's strange areas of life, but it happens. Maybe you can relate. I remember when our boys were young, we'd send them off to a birthday party. We'd tell them to make sure they minded their manners and be respectful and all that kind of stuff. And then when they came home, what was the first thing we'd ask them? Did you have fun? Was the party about them having fun or about helping their friend feel special? I think it was about helping their friends feel special, but we never once asked that question. Did you help your friend feel special today? That that would be the reason you had the party, not just making you feel happy. We get mixed up on which one's more important. Or maybe another example. Maybe during what some refer to as the unholy hour. You know what that is? It's the hour just before church. The unholy hour. The, the unholy hour where you got mad at your kids when they wouldn't get out of bed. You growled at your spouse for being late. You were rude with the slow poke in the road that made you late. The unholy hour. But now it got to be 10 o'clock, we're going to put a smile on the face and we're going to say, Hi, nice to see you. Just wait till 11 o'clock when everything goes back to normal. But which is normal? Is God just concerned about what happens between 10 and 11? On Sunday morning? No. We tend to get wrapped up in what we're doing. And we forget why we're doing it. So in describing the communion service, he provided a very short list of instructions. Charles Spurgeon explained it to his church this way many, many years ago. He said, there are no age restrictions listed, 
No elaborate ceremony described. Nothing but the breaking and eating of bread followed by the pouring and drinking of the wine. And these two things are to be done in remembrance of Christ. Yet there's a certain aspect to the Lord's Supper which is essential. It's the very soul and marrow of the ordinance. Do this in remembrance of me. To remember Christ is the main point. To allow your memory to look at him in the face. To put your fingers in the print of the nails, to thrust your hand into his side, to adore the Savior whose head for us was crowned with thorns, but is now crowned with glory. This we are called to do in remembrance of him, to call to mind our Savior. This this is why we gather at the table, in remembrance of him. With all that in mind, I want to I want to call to mind some of the things that I find to be distractions on a communion Sunday morning. Maybe you'll be able to relate, maybe not. I want to also tell you how I've learned to avoid those distractions and maybe provide some tips along the way. I I don't know if I'm the only one, but I find communion Sunday mornings to be some of the most difficult ones for me to stay focused on why I'm here. If I'm, if I'm not careful, my mind starts to wander onto plenty of other things. And I think that's partly due to the fact that Satan would love nothing more than to get my mind off of the sacrifice Christ made on my behalf and to forget completely about why I'm here. I, distractions like my priorities, things I need to do, Plans I need to make for the day, for the coming week. People I see in church and I'm suddenly reminded of, oh, I I need to talk to them about. All of them are important things. They're not bad things. But they're not the main thing. Jesus doesn't say, participate in this ceremony with your mind preoccupied with other things. He says, do this in remembrance of me. And obeying that instruction, it requires me to take every other thought captive, as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 10.5, to intentionally set them aside and focus my attention on him. My priorities can distract me. So also can my memories. At the communion table, I find it so easy to think of memories. Some of them are painful. When I come to the cross and I see the depth of the sacrifice that Christ made on my behalf, it's easy for my mind to be caught up in the ways I've failed them. The communion table reminds me of the forgiveness I can find when I repent of my sin, and I must repent before I come to the table, But even then, that's not what this table's about. It's not a table about my past failures. We're called to remember our Savior, not our sin and our shortcoming. Some memories, well, they're joyful. Do you remember when you first invited Jesus into your heart? Maybe like me, you grew up in a church. Do you remember the first time your parents said, no, you don't have to pass the tray, you get to participate? Maybe you were someone who wandered away from God and you came back to him. Do you remember that first time you took communion and you really understood the significance of it? It's easy to be caught up in those memories, but as good as those memories are, they can't steal our attention away from Jesus because we come in remembrance of him. Some of my memories are nostalgic. I remember loved ones who've gone on. I remember times when we celebrated communion together. I think particularly of my grandfather. Sitting in church, hearing him sing, Up from the grave he arose. And then 
with the early stages of Parkinson's watching him try to hold his communion cup. Some of you know that journey. It's easy to remember those things as I come here. And as good as those memories are, they're not why I'm here. I come in remembrance of him. I celebrate that my grandfather is now celebrating communion with him in glory. But I remember him. There are also some memories that cause a certain measure of anxiety. I might be tempted to remember someone who I love who's not walking with God. Maybe they've never accepted him. Maybe they've wandered away. And it's easy at a time like this to be, to be distracted by the life choices they've made, so the journey that they've taken. And to find myself again preoccupied with someone other than my Savior. And again, I find myself quoting Charles Spurgeon. He said, Memories are natural, allowable, and profitable, but they must be kept in secondary place. They must never crowd out the remembrance of Christ. He did not say to the disciples, do this in remembrance of one another or in remembrance of your conversion or in remembrance of your former state of sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So I say to these other memories, stand back and let him fill the central position. Let him occupy the throne of my heart. That's what we're declaring when we come to the table. I come in remembrance of the one who sits on the throne of my heart. Those are some of the distractions I face. How do you overcome them? I think, I think that's where the genius of the Lord's table comes in. Jesus gave us an object lesson, didn't he? He gave us an object lesson we can relate to in the Lord's Supper. The moment I walk through those doors and I see that table, I see that it's not placed behind some secret wall where there's limited access. It's not placed up on some lofty perch where no one can reach it. It's accessible. Jesus is accessible. He's the one who says to all of us, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I see the table. I can set aside a distraction and focus my attention on him. When I take the bread in my hand, I pause intentionally for a moment to think of how that bread's been made. Just, just follow the process for a moment. Seed is buried in the ground, eventually splits a tiny root begins to grow downward. A shoot starts to grow upward till it reaches the surface. When it's exposed to the sun and the wind and the rain and when it's ripe, it's cut down. It's threshed and ground in a mill. The flour's kneaded into the dough, pressed into the shape of a loaf, thrust in a hot oven, then baked before being broken and eaten. All of it is a reminder that the body of Jesus was beaten and broken for me. Do this in remembrance of me. When I take the cup, I'm reminded that grapes aren't merely bruised. They're crushed. Jesus was not merely bruised for my sin. He died for it. He died in my place. And as I prepare for the communion service, I know that at some point we're going to be asked to participate together. Each one of us is going to have the opportunity to eat and drink, which is a reminder that Jesus is not someone just to be looked at, to be talked about. He's to be embraced, to be welcomed inside. He died for my sin, but until I embrace him, I cannot be blessed with the gift he offers. And all of that brings me to my final point, which is that if I learn to stay focused, setting aside the distractions, I get to experience all the blessings of the table. 
for example. It's here, as I remember Jesus, that my faith that's been battered and bruised is renewed. It's here, as I remember Jesus, that my love that has been, well, quite frankly, growing cold and calloused can be rekindled. It's here, as I remember Jesus, that my hopes that have been crushed are rejuvenated. It's here, as I remember Jesus, my priorities that have become rather self-centered and selfish can be refocused. And on this day of Pentecost in June 2022, I would remind you that it is here that as I remember Jesus, my strength is revived as I remember that his spirit now lives in me. And I don't walk in these days alone. Not even once. Don't allow the distractions to rob you of the blessings that are ours as we come to the table. We do this in remembrance of him. Who should come? In our church, we say everyone is welcome. If you've asked Jesus into your heart and you're walking in a right relationship with him, you're welcome to come. If you've not accepted him, if you've not yet made that decision, or if you know you're living in open rebellion to him, then I'd encourage you to watch rather than to participate. And it's because God's word calls us to examine our hearts. And if we've not yet welcomed him into our life, or if we're intentionally living in defiance to him, then we'd be eating and drinking without embracing the significance of this ceremony. Maybe today's the day you'll make all of that right in your, re your relationship with God. Maybe today, as you examine your heart, it'll be the day that, that God pokes and provokes and you bring your life in alignment with him. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for this invitation to come to your table. We don't come because we are worthy or because we have lived a perfect life. We come because our Savior accomplished what we could never achieve on the cross of Calvary. We come because we can find forgiveness of sin, peace with you that will last for all eternity. So we come in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'd like to ask those who are going to be assisting at the table to come forward at this time. Jesus 
Sing at the cross again. And at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. And I'm in all of you. Why do we need to remember? I think it's because we tend to be kind of forgetful. We forget who God is and we try to live life based on our own strength. We forget who we are and how desperately we need God's grace. We forget all of the resources we have in Christ, his power, his presence, his promises, his provision. We forget how wise and encouraging and protective and freeing God's word is. We forget our need for the body of Christ, that our spiritual life is meant to be a group project, not a solo effort. We forget that we've not only been blessed to be recipients of God's grace, but we've been called to be tools of that grace in the lives of others. We forget that there really is an enemy who prowls around to devour us spiritually. We forget that we've been created to live for a glory that's bigger than our own and for a kingdom that's greater than what we could construct on our own. We're called to remember because we tend to forget. So as we come to the table this morning, I encourage you to set aside the distractions and remember Jesus. Remember his sacrifice. Remember the salvation he died to secure. Remember the life he empowers you to live. Remember him. This is his body broken for us. Let's do this in remembrance of him. There's a place for sin and shame are powerless. When my heart has peace with God and forgiveness, we're all.
blood of Christ shed for you. Let's participate together. Sundays, some of you come carrying heavy burdens and you look for opportunity to maybe meet with someone and pray. I want to make sure you know that that opportunity is available. So this morning, I'm just going to go over here. If you want to join me by the cross, if there's something you want us to pray about, we're happy to do so. If not, God bless you as you go. Have a great week walking with God and look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless.